Hi Duels, it's Oscar from MST TV here. And I'm Nishi. And today we're doing the set preview for Secrets of Eternity, which is coming out on January 15th, 2015. And the reason that we're doing these set previews is that we want to give you guys a heads up of what cards you guys should be paying attention to at the sneak peek and cards that maybe you guys should be letting go. So in this we're really going to focus on how much the cards are expected to be and what impact they will have on the meta. The set features support for the Cliphort, Shadal, Burning Abyss, and Satellanite archetypes. And it also releases a new archetype called Infernoids, which are basically fire fiend monsters that uh, can special summon themselves by banishing other Infernoids monsters from the graveyard. They also have ignition effects that either bounce or destroy something, and they have quick effects that DD Crow. Shadal gets two new cards in the upcoming set. The first is Neth Shadal Fusion, which lets you fusion summon monsters from your extra deck without playing the attributes that they're made from. Which is actually not that great. I see maybe Shadals will play one of it at most. Um, it's similar to Core, so it's just not a very great card, and it could be MST'd. Um, the second card that Shadals get is Wendigo El Shadal, and it's Quite honestly, the worst Shadal card you can play. It's god awful. Please don't play it. Once per turn, you can target one monster and it can't be destroyed by battle. And only by special summon monsters. And it's 2800 with 200 attack. It's fucking awful. Don't play it, please. So the equip spell, Nef Shadal Fusion. At sneak peek, I see this being about a $20 card as it's a secret rare. However, because most Shadal players aren't going to be playing very many copies, I think it's going to settle at around $10 to $12. Uh, the fusion monster as a super rare, I see it being at most $5, probably even less. Okay, so Burning Abyss is actually getting several cards in the new set. Um, they're getting three effect monsters, one ritual card, and of course the last one is the ritual monster. Um, the first Burning Abyss monster they're getting is Burning Abyss Farfa, which lets you banish one monster on the board until the end phase. It's actually quite good to op for opening up OTK potentials, and if you mill with Dante, it actually gets pretty sacky. Um, I would probably play one or two, depending on the ratio of the deck. Not being not a Burning Abyss player, I'm not really 100% sure. The second Burning Abyss card is Burning Abyss Lybic, which lets you special summon one Burning Abyss monster from your hand. This card is actually quite decent and can be used in quite a couple combos um, to open Dante first turn, or to make two Dantes. I would probably play two to three, and again the ratios depend on if they want to make Dante for turn one or not. The third BA monster is BA Cagna, which lets you foolish a spell or trap to the grave. It lets, lets you search uh, Fire Lake and um, the spell Good and Evil of the Burning Abyss, and you can add them back to your hand using Dante. And it's actually quite a good card, maybe play one or two. Because all three of these monsters are just rares, you're probably going to be able to pick them up from somebody for free. I wouldn't worry too much about grabbing these cards. And the normal monsters are actually quite good. Similar to how the previous set increased the BA monster count, it'll let BA players make Dante more often, which is very important, and I'm sure someone out there will find a very good ratio for it to make the deck as good as it can be. So the ritual card is Good and Evil of Burning Abyss, which is actually quite a decent card, not for its ability to actually ritual summon, but for its ability to send one BA monster from your hand to the graveyard, lets you proc the effect, and then you can add a BA monster from your deck to your hand. It's actually quite good because it lets you cycle your cards and use the abilities, and it might see play at one in the deck. The ritual monster is a secret rare, and it's probably one of the worst cards um, in the set. I would not play it at all. It lets you send one BA monster from the deck from your hand to the graveyard, and then lowers the attack and defense by that monster's attack and defense. Honestly, it's not that great, and it probably won't see any play. So the super rare spell card, good and evil in the Burning Abyss. Uh, it's probably going to be about a 7 to $8 super rare at the sneak peek, but I see it settling at around $5. Um, the secret rare, Malaconda, um, because it's a secret rare and because of how Burning Abyss is a very popular archetype that's seen a lot of recent YCS and ARG tops, I think that as a hype price at the sneak peek event, it could go for anywhere from $15 to $20. Ultimately, because the card isn't that great, I see it settling anywhere from 5 to 10. So Clifford's are actually getting a number of new cards in this new set, but there are really only two notable new cards. Uh, the first new card is Clifford Stealth Plane, or Alias as we know it. 
and it's when you tribute this summon this monster with a cliff fort monster you can bounce one card on the board and it can't be chained to it's actually a very good card cliff are probably going to play two of it and um make sure to pick it up if you find it clipboard stealth plane as an ultra rare uh, because Clipports are a really prominent deck right now, I can see the card being anywhere from $30 to $40 at sneak peek. Um, realistically though, I see it going the same way that Clipports Scout or Sacrifice did, and settling at around $20 to $25. So the next new card is Clifford Assembler, which is a normal Pendulum monster. And its effect is when uh, you Pendulum Summon and then you Tribute Clifford Monsters, you can draw cards numbered to the Clifford Monsters tributed for a summon that turn. It's an okay card, maybe played at 1 at most, and used with the Pendulum Scale with that and Scout, and it lets you get draw power. The problem is though, you only draw during the end phase, so it's actually quite a slow card. Because Clipboard Assembler is a secret error, I, I can actually see it going for quite a bit at sneak peek, uh, so maybe at around $30 to $35. Um, but as Oscar said, I don't think it's a very good card. Um, it's probably going to settle at around 10 to 15. So there are actually several notable cards in this new set. The first one is Pot of Riches, which is kind of like Pot of Avarice for Pendulums. It lets you return three Pendulum monsters from the extra deck or your graveyard to your deck, and it'll let you draw two cards. However, you can't special summon except for Pendulum Summon, which is basically a giant joke. and. That's pretty much it. So it's a draw power card. Well, it won't see much play in Cliff Forts. You'll probably see a lot of play in the future when really good Pendulum decks get released, when Konami tries to sell the new sets. Because Cliff Forts probably aren't going to be playing Pot of Riches, I don't see that this card as being very expensive at Sneak, uh, just because it's not really playable right now and it's not going to be used. Um, so at Sneak Peek and on the release of the set, I see this card being anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars however i definitely think that if you guys see it for that price you guys should pick it up hold on to it as soon as konami releases more prominent pendulum decks its price is going to shoot way up the second notable card is turnover soul also another secret it's a trap card and you can tribute one level four normal summoned or set monster to draw two cards and you can't special summon the turn you activate that card the card is great it'll probably be played in cliff forts at two and it lets you draw, use Carrier or Helix to pop or compulse the opponent's monster's board, and you don't have to take the negative special summoning clause because it's used on your opponent's turn. Great draw power card, wonderful in Cliff Forts, and we'll probably see play in the future in other decks. So because Cliff Forts are a very prominent deck right now, and because level fours are a very common level for monsters, there are a lot of different archetypes that are gonna be able to exploit this card. Um, I see this being a $35 to $40 card at Sneak Peek, and I actually think it's going to stay around that price. Um, if It's kind of going to fluctuate depending on what decks are meta relevant and what decks are really being played. If there are a lot of people playing level 4 heavy decks, I see the price going up a little bit, and if not, then maybe the price will come back down a little bit. But overall, I think the price is going to stay very steady. The third notable card we're discussing is Chaos the Mega Monarch. It's basically the Chaos version of the Mega Monarchs, and when you tribute a dark monster, you can target two monsters onto the field and they'll banish it, burn a thousand. And if the monster that you banished is a dark monster, you'll banish all copies from the deck, hand, and grave. It's an okay card. Um, it can be played in Shadows of Shadow Beast, but I don't think it will. It's very inconsistent. Otherwise, it's kind of okay for the Monarch archetype. So because Monarchs aren't really a very popular deck, I see Mega Kaius going the same way that all of the other Mega Monarchs did, and it's going to be maybe $7 at Sneak Peek, but it's going to settle at around 5 So the final notable card that we're going to be discussing is Swordsman of Revealing Light. Um, this card's a level 8 monster, light attribute warrior type with 0 attack and 2400 defense, and when your opponent declares a direct attack, you can special summon this card from your hand, negate the attack, and if the attacking monster has less than 2400 attack points, that monster is destroyed. Also, you can overlay using this card, and if you do, the monster that you exceed summon into, once per turn, cannot be destroyed by battle. I actually think that this is a really good card. Um, it's more versatile in some ways than Gores, because you can special summon it even if you have cards set in your back row. Um, 
Obviously, you're not getting a token, and it only has 2400 defense, but in something like Gimmick Puppets, where um, the deck can spit out rank 8s, it can obviously be a very good card. I feel like it'll be a little cheesy in Sylvans too, you can play in Sylvans and make it with Felgrand, and it'll be an okay combo, but I wouldn't see a high meta impact with this card. Yeah, uh, I think that it's a card that won't see much play right now, just because there aren't really any relevant decks that are making rank 8 Exceeds. So I think that at sneak peek and on the set drop, it'll be anywhere from 5 to $7. I think it's a card that you could hold on to and it, just because it has the potential to see more play in the future. Okay, so Secrets of Returning is being released in January, but there's also a Super Edition that's being released on February 27th, about a month after the release date. The Super Edition comes with three packs, and it also gives you access to the Super cards. They're all going to be reprinted, kind of like the previous set, and that'll probably impact the pricing of the cards. Yeah, so really when the set drops and at sneak peek, you shouldn't be paying very much for any of the Super Airs, just because we all know that they're going to be reprinted really, really soon in the future. Any of the Super Airs that you would be picking up, I wouldn't pay more than $10 for it, just because you want to use the card in your deck, uh, because really a month isn't that long to wait. So what did you guys think of our first set preview video? Do you guys think that we missed any cards? If you do, leave a comment down below. If you like this video, make sure you give us a like or subscribe. Until next time, remember to fall into your MSTs. TV. <laughs> <laughs>